Hi, I'm Bastard the TypeScript Guy, and in today's lesson, we will look at the mental model that you should have as a React developer, and hopefully you'll be able to see what makes it great. Let's go. So we start off with the basic Hello World React application from a previous lesson. One key thing to understand about React is JSX. JSX is very akin to something like an object literal. For example, here we have an object that has a property foo pointing to the string hello world. And we can see that object on the console. JSX is just a fancy way of creating an object using an API provided from React. And you can see that it just creates an object with a particular structure underneath. This is called Virtual DOM. It is an object representation of what you want React to render to the actual DOM. Here we are asking React to take this particular Virtual DOM and render it to the real DOM at the node identified by root. Syntactically, this is called a JavaScript object literal and this is called a JSX element. In addition to supporting native tags as lowercase names, React allows you to create your own components by creating variables that use an uppercase first letter. These components can in turn return other components and these can be either native components or custom components as well. And you use these custom components in JSX elements just like native tags. In addition to object literals, JavaScript has this concept of string templates, represented by backticks. String templates, in turn, allow you to use a variable from the surrounding context. For example, I can interpolate the variable world within the string. And when I change the variable, it gets interpolated into the template string. JSX also has this concept of interpolation. Within a JSX element, I can interpolate using the curly braces. For example, I can interpolate the variable world into my UI. Now there are three key dynamic portions of building a UI application. Let's look at how JSX and React supports them. The first one to think about is conditional rendering. Here we have a variable called 5050, which is randomly going to be either true or false. We can use this variable within a JavaScript template string to conditionally render the string world. We can use the same logic within our JSX elements to conditionally render the word world. And now whenever it is true, it is present in the object literal as well as in the UI. And when it is not true, it is not there in the object literal or the UI. We can use conditionals to add additional members to a JavaScript object. And JSX applies the same concept to optionally add additional JSX members. And now whenever the condition is true, we get an additional object literal member as well as an additional JSX element which React renders to the DOM. The next dynamic thing that you need to think about is a dynamic number of elements. Here we have an array of some dynamic number of elements. We can map these into something different within an object literal quite easily using the array map method. For example, we can make these strings into something that is uppercase. JSX allows us to use the same array map method to generate new JSX elements. The only requirement is that each JSX element within the array must have its own unique key. Here we are simply going to use 
the index i of the item in the array. And you can see that we got a mapped capitalized hello world. The number of items in the output object literal is dependent upon the number of items in the strings array. And similarly, the number of items rendered to JSX is dynamically dependent on the number of items in the strings array. The existence of key within n number of dynamic elements brings us neatly into the third dynamic thing that you need to handle within a UI application. A particular UI screen is simply a representation of the application state as HTML. When the application state changes based on some user interaction or network response, the UI needs to be updated to reflect this change in application state. Let's look at an example of how React handles the dynamic nature of state. Here we have a simple example component that renders timer 0 to the DOM. Components created by extending react.component get an opportunity to declare their own state. For example, we can initialize a state with a particular time member that we initialize to zero. And we get to use this state within our render function. For example, this.state.time. In addition to the ability to declare their own state, they get an opportunity to hook into the component lifecycle by overriding methods like component did mount. And they also get an API set state to change the state over time. Here we are going to go ahead and update the state with a new time member updated by one every second. And whenever the state time member changes, React will go ahead and render the component again. JSX is simply a way of declaring what the UI should look like and the hard work of keeping the DOM up to date is done by React. You can see that JSX borrows concepts from standard JavaScript to bring you the convenience of structured application development to UI applications. In addition, if you use TypeScript, you get code refactorability and maintainability in the long run. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Till next time, bye.